Hi, a couple of uh, weeks ago I uh, produced a video analyzing the uh, WebSnow slash uh, Snowfit uh, data and um, I think I managed to uh, get uh, the main results from it but uh, when I first have the data I might as well uh, play around a little bit with it and what I'm going to look at here first and foremost is the difference between atheists and agnostics so I'm just looking at those two groups and um, well the reason is I'm curious I, um, I've heard it argued that uh, there is no difference between agnostics and atheists and uh, don't quite manage to make that uh, fit my own uh, image of the two categories, so um, I'm going to take a look. First off, there's a 226 atheists in uh, this survey and only 29 agnostics. Still, it could be possible to detect differences between the groups. First off, for every question we can entertain two hypotheses. L0 is independence between question 1 and question 2 and age 1 is that uh, any probability goes uh, so an example of a zero hypothesis is the probability of being female and being atheist is the probability of being female times the probability of being an atheist an explanation for the statistical terms used here uh, can be found in the first uh, part of this series uh, but I need to say that for a string of tests you need uh, stronger evidence than you need for a standalone test so uh, using a base factor of 600 as a limit for deciding that there is a difference between the groups for a string of tests and um, frequentist significance level of 0.17% the usual 5% now for the 31 different questions I looked at, I've got uh, 11 tests that indicated uh, Bayesian evidence for dependence and I'm going to go through them in uh, a climbing order, so the weakest uh, indicators first. The weakest was religious upbringing, um, I'm showing here with colors uh, the um, contributions to the chi-square test with red indicating uh, more observations than expected under age zero and blue indicating less observations than expected and as you can see um, there are less agnostics in uh, the other category of religious upbringing and more with an Abrahamic uh, religious upbringing. As a standalone frequentist test you would call age zero rejected but uh, the Bayesian test says that this is very weak evidence for age one dependence. Next up is creationism. Now you wouldn't expect any results here in the yes category for either atheist or agnostics but here they are. There's one atheist of 226 and one agnostic of 29 that has answered yes on creationism and I really don't know why. Maybe they interpreted the question as do you believe that creationism exists? Mm, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, or maybe they just didn't know what creationism was or maybe they're very, very original. Anyway, um, that's a, quite a bit difference in frequency at least, and the Bayesian test picks up on it, while the frequentist test doesn't. And I'm taking this as a strength uh, for Bayesian testing. Next up is gender. There's more agnostic females than is expected than the age zero. The evidence is still weak, but it's getting stronger now. Then there's judgment concerns. More agnostic than expected answered yes on that question, and few answered no, of course. 
the frequentist tests are below the uh, level for standalone reje rejection, but, but not under the significance level for a string of tests. The base factor is 4.65, so the data is 4.65 times more likely and the edge 1 than edge 0. So we're starting to get some indications of differences here. Yeah? Next videos with religious contents. More agnostics answered no and fewer answered yes than expected. I had here removed uh, anyone who hadn't made videos on YouTube. The evidence is about as strong as for the previous test. Then there's the switching of religion. More agnostic have switched multiple times and fewer have never switched than expected. And the differences here are starting to get uh, large. The base factor is almost 13, uh, so uh, the probability for age 0 is driven downwards. Supernatural experience. More than a third of agnostics say they have experienced something supernatural, which is way more than expected on the age 0. The frequentist tests dip below the significance level for a string of tests. The base factor isn't as strong as I would have liked yet, but it's getting pretty strong. Life after death, yes, no. More agnostics than expected, four answered yes. And there was two atheists, two out of 226, so the rate is much smaller for atheists than for agnostics. And um, the frequentist tests dip below the significance level for a string of tests, and the base factor is just as high as for the last one. Do you believe in the Big Bang? Uh, more than a third of the agnostics answered no there and that's way more than expected. The frequentist p-values are starting to get microscopic and the base factor is almost at the uh, level uh, that I wanted. Note that I've already gotten some other large base factors so uh, taken together the, this could be uh, more than enough to say that there's a difference between agnostics and atheists, but um, I'm not too well versed in uh, Bayesian uh, meta-analysis, so I'm just going to uh, stick to the thing I decided. But here we get to it. A biogenesis, yes, no. Uh, 22 agnostics answered no and only 7 answered yes, uh, while there was 82 atheist answering no and 144 answering yes. Actually 82 uh, atheist answering no may be a little weird. A biogenesis says that uh, the first life was formed from inanimate matter in a natural process. So what is the alternative here? Yeah? But uh, maybe it's uh, what we're measuring is simply a familiarity with uh, scientific terms. Still, a difference is a difference. And there, di there is a difference here. The base factor is well over 600, it's 746. And the um, frequentist p values are microscopic. So, here is a real difference between atheists and agnostics. It's not even the strongest, there is one that's even stronger. Reincarnation. Almost one in three agnostics in this survey answered yes. And very few atheists answered the same. The frequentist p-values are really microscopic and so is the probability of edge 0 given the data. The base factor is 22,712, 
which is the probability of the data under age 1 dependence divided by the probability for the data given age 0 independence. Very clear evidence. Okay, that's enough divisiveness for one day. I hope you enjoyed it.